All right, so starting off first, the 1942 Jefferson Nickel. All right, so we're gonna start with this image here. This is going to show you if your coin from 1942 is either silver or not silver. So the type one here, you can see that the mint mark is not there, but here on the right, we see that big P mint mark. Now, if you have a big P, D, or S mint mark there, that is going to tell you that your coin is 35% silver. So in 1942, there was a P, D, and S silver, but there's also a non-silver, which would be the coin here on the left, type one. All right, so let's start with the S mint mark. So here is an example of the S mint mark. We see that big S there on the back of the building. So what you wanna look for is a repunched mint mark. So these are a few examples here of a repunched mint mark. You really see it here at the bottom of the S there, going through there. And then here on this example, you kinda of see it there towards the left of the S. So a re-punched mint mark. Look for that on your big S mint marks on the 1942 Jefferson nickel. Now, here are some different coin prices for these coins. This coin here is graded at a mint state 64. So it's got a pretty good grade. And because of that, this coin sold for around $25. So, you know, it's really going to be a top, top grade that's going to give it value. And that's what this coin here is. A mint state 67 grade, graded by PCGS. This nickel sold for over $3,000. And again, this is the silver one. We see that big S there on the reverse. So big difference there in coin prices. Now here is a 1942. This coin is really interesting. It is a mint error. The coin was actually struck on a silver 4.7 gram planchet. A silver alloy planchet. So really interesting there, this coin sold for over $9,000. And it's got a really low grade as we see that it is extremely worn down. But again, because of that mint error, this coin sold for nearly $10,000. We see that there is no big mint mark there on the reverse. So we have the regular Jefferson nickel design struck on a silver planchet essentially. Now here is the 1942 proof. This is the type two. This coin here sold for over $14,000. And again, we see that P mint mark there on the reverse of the coin. Very, very flawless coin graded at a proof 67. Man, just awesome. Would love to have something like that, but 14,000, I think I would have to sell it. Now here is the 1941 type one. So this is going to be the proof coin, of course and it is graded at a proof 68. So very, very high grade. We see that it's the no mint mark, so this is not the silver version of the 1942 nickel, but this coin still sold for over $8,000 as a result of that high grade. Again, here's a non-silver example of the 1942. You see that there is no mint mark at all. Now here is that coin, 1942 Jefferson nickel. This is the non-silver version, and what gives us value is just the high grade of a Mint State 67, and this coin sold for over $3,800, so nearly a $4,000 coin. Now here is a 1942 P Mint mark. It is the silver version. It's the high grade, and it's graded at a Mint State 67. This coin sold for over $4,000. Now also on the 1942, here is what you want to look for. You wanna look for doubling, so look for that there on the outline of the nose, and we also see that there on the lettering as well as the date 1942 itself. So use your USB coin microscope to see that doubling up close. I have those microscopes available on couchcollectibles.com. Link is always below every single video I upload. Now here is that coin, the 1942 double die obverse, and it's got a mint state 65 grade. So if it didn't have a high grade, it wouldn't sell for as much, but in this condition, this nickel sold for over $370. All right, so this 1942 was double struck, it's been broad struck and rotated. Okay, so really interesting coin here. And it is graded at a mint state 67, Wow, that is just a really awesome coin. I could see people definitely passing something like this up. You see the design rotated there on the reverse. 
really awesome. This nickel sold for around $850. Now also what you want to look for on your 1942, this is going to be the D mint mark. Now this is going to be the non silver Jefferson nickel. So we got a D over a horizontal D. So we see that there, the D underneath it, horizontal D, vertical D on top. So that's the easiest way to explain that. There's a couple examples of that. Now here is an example of that coin, an extra fine 40 grade by Annex. So definitely not a mint state grade or anything like that, but it is an extra fine 40. It's got the D over the horizontal D. As a result of that, this nickel sold for around $140. Not too bad. Now here is a much better example of that coin, graded at a mint state 64. It's got the D over the horizontal D, and this has got the high grade. This coin sold for over $30,000. That's right, 30 grand. Let me know in the comments below what you would do with $30,000. All right, here's a 1942 D mint mark. Again, this is the non-silver version. So if you see that small D there on the side of the building, you know it's not silver. This coin here sold for over $800 because of its mint state 67 grade. All right, this is another example of the 1942, the D over the horizontal D, graded by NGC at a mint state 60. This Jefferson nickel sold for over $1,600, nearly a $2,000 coin. All right, here's some other nickels that you should always be on the lookout for. Now in 1939, the first thing you wanna look for is doubling on the date, 1939 itself. Pretty visible doubling there on the date of the coin. And we also wanna look for that on the word Liberty. Now you can do this with a USB coin microscope. I have those available on couchcollectibles.com. Link is always in the description of every video that I upload. And what you also wanna look for is doubling on the back of the coin, a double die reverse. So you wanna look for that on the lettering of the coin, very, very visible doubling here. I've showed this image in previous videos, so screenshot it, that way you know what to look for. Now here's an example of some double die reverses. So first off, here is a double die reverse, 1939 nickel, that sold for over $350. Now this coin is not a mint state grade, it's graded at about uncirculated 58, so an AU58. However, this also has the reverse of the 1940. So let me explain that here real quick. All right, so here is the 1939 Jefferson nickel with the reverse of the 1938. So the reverse basically features the original hub of the 1938, which has kind of wavy steps. All right, so here's the other example that has straight steps. So wavy steps, straight steps, you get the difference there. Now, this is a 1939 with the double die reverse that has a very high grade. It's graded at a mint state 67, and this coin sold for over $20,000. We see the doubling there on the lettering on the back of the coin. Man, I mean, you can look for this. Even in bad condition, they're gonna sell, just not for $20,000. This is selling for $20,000 because it's got that doubling and it's in very, very good condition with that high grade. Now, 1939, they did make around 3.5 million of the D mint mark. Now, if we look at the P mint mark, the no mint mark, uh, they made around 120 million. So a big difference in uh, how many they made for the mint mark. In 1939S, they only made 6.6 .6 million. So the D mint mark is going to be the lowest minted one with around 3.5 million of those made. Now here is a 1939 D mint mark that has the reverse of the 1938. So that's what we just looked at with the wavy steps. This coin's got some incredible toning to it. It's in excellent condition. It's got that high grade by PCGS, a mint state 67, and this nickel sold for over $6,000. 6,000 bucks. Now here's a 1939 error coin. Now it's been broad struck. You see that, uh, you know, very visible there. It's, uh, you know, nothing you would need a microscope for to see. And this coin sold for over $500. And the collection that it was in uh, has to do with the value as well. Now also you want to look for a quadruple die reverse. So quadrupling taking place on the lettering, which we see here on this example here. 
And we also have the Proof Coin, the 1939. Now this has the reverse of the 1938. So really cool for the Proof Coin, graded at a Proof 68, super high grade. And this coin sold for over $11,000 as a result of that. Now here's the 1939, reverse of the 1940. And this coin sold for over $23,000 because of its condition. And look at the toning of that coin, man. That is incredible. We see the straight steps there on the reverse as well. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe in the middle. Check out the videos to the left of me. And until tomorrow, I will see you on the comment section below. This is Couch Collectibles, and this is where I disappear.